and welcome back to my studio. I'm Barbara Swift, this is Coco, and you're watching Be Swift Art. In today's video, we're going to do an emperor angelfish. We're going to do some zentangle in the background, and we're going to do a multicolor background. I'll show you how to do that. And we're going to put a little bit of zentangle on the fish itself. So let me know in the comments if you like this video or for future videos what you'd like to see. I'm always open to new suggestions and then I get to try out new art supplies, which is always fun. Are you ready to paint? Let's get started. Okay, as you can see, I've already sketched out a picture of my Emperor Fish in pencil. And I'm just taking my big quill and I'm going to just put some clean water on the fish part that is going to be yellow. So right now I'm going to start with the yellow. And since it's a big area, I'm using the biggest brush I can get away with using. And we're just going to put some light yellow in here and just kind of letting it flow wherever the water is. I kind of want to get it a little bit of a mottled look. I don't want it to be too, too solid. So some areas have a little bit more color in them. And I'm going to be adding more colors to it also as we go along. So I'm going to get in between those little stripes there on the back, on the side of them. And just block in my yellow. You can see it's quite wet. And go underneath where his fin's going to be. And we're going to detail the fin a little bit later. So I'm not too worried about, you know, going in between because the fin's transparent. Now I'm going to dab in just a little bit of orange, just to give it a little bit of dimension, kind of like a, where the shadows would be, so that he looks curved and not totally flat, flat on the page. So a little bit of orange in there, and then I'm going to take a little bit of blue, just a tiny bit, and dab it in here and there, and I'm going to come back with my clean quill, all rinsed out, and I'm just going to blend. So everything is still very wet, wet on wet technique here. So the, the pigment will flow into whatever areas are wet. And then the blue and the yellow make a green, and then the orange and the yellow make a yellow-orange, so you get different colors. It's mixing it right on the paper. And I'm just going to clean up some of those edges where I want a nice hard line. Put a little bit, just using the tip of that quill. It'll come to a nice point, so you can, um, just with a lighter touch, use it in real um, tight spaces. I'm using my Magello Mission Gold paints today, and um, those colors were lemon yellow. Um, the orange is yellow-orange, and then the, the blue I'm using is the um, peacock blue. And I'm just taking some water. I still have a little bit of yellow in my quill, but that's okay. I'm just going to get some water and now do the face, which can be white or it can have a little bit of a blue tint to it. And I'm going to put a little bit of a blue very, very lightly. Remember, when all these dry, they're going to be much paler than you see them wet. So I'm just going to put a little bit of you know, really watered down blue in here. And again, I want it that kind of mottled look. don't want it to be super, super solid. Because we're looking at him through the water. So, And then those bottom fins, too. We can put a little water on there. And then come in with the yellow. The Emperor Angel Fish... When it's juvenile, it's blue and black and white, and it almost has like a, a wavy bullseye pattern on the side. So this is how it grows into the adult. It has the yellow and blue. It's a totally different pattern on the fish. You would never even know it's the same fish. Interesting how nature is. And now I'm going to do like a multicolored background so my fish is totally dry. So I let him dry completely. And I'm coming back in now with blue and purple 
and just making a, a watery background. Just dropping it in. So it's very wet paint. It's the consistency, I'd say, of like a skim milk. Um, not real thick, very wet. And I'm just letting these colors mix in together. So I'm using Cerulean Blue. And I'm also using, um, let's see here, Bright Clear Violet for the purple. And then I always like to throw in just a little bit of the Viridian. Which is that blue-green. So as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about, you know, kind of where the water might be a little darker, where it might get a little bit of light coming through from the, the surface. And I'm dropping in just some water, just clear water, on my quill and just dropping it in to break it up a little bit more. And I don't want my splotches to be stripes. I want them to be, you know, blended into the color next to it really well so that it's just blotchy and not stripes or graphic looking. And put a little bit of that viridian in there. And then coming right up to the fish. Just dropping in color. It's all very wet, so it'll all blend. Using the biggest brush I can use. I like this quill a lot for these kind of things because it's loose and you can, it holds a lot of water, so you can get a lot of paint in your brush at one, one time there. Excuse me. I'll take this opportunity while we're watching this to thank you all for tuning into my videos and subscribing. And if you like my videos and you haven't already scribed, subscribed, if you wouldn't mind just hitting that subscribe button and also the like button. The like button lets YouTube know that you like my videos and it helps me to spread the word. So I really, really appreciate that. And I dropped in some more water, as you can see. But I'm only using 140-pound paper, so I am getting a little bit of the wavy um, paper there when it gets too wet. So I usually like to use 300-pound arches as my very favorite. Um, but this one is 140, and it's Strathmore paper, which I like a lot, too. I've been using that. So I'm just kind of blotting up any big puddles. Just with um, toilet tissue. And you can see how how much pale, more pale it got there on my fish. If you remember that blue looked pretty intense, but it now is just barely there. And I'm just coming out in and deepening some areas that might be a little darker underneath the fish. Now when I do that, coming back in like that, uh, you run the risk of getting a bloom. So you see that big old bloom I got there? It's water, so I don't mind. And I'm going to be doing some Zentangle on top of this water. So, you know, that'll work out okay. But right now I'm just going in with that Cerulean Blue. And I'm highlighting some of those blue markings in the fish. So his fin I've kind of exaggerated a bit just for fun because when I do the Zentangle I'm going to exaggerate those lines at, for the second fin that would be somewhere behind there. So the Emperor Fish has a lot of these areas that are just stripes of bright blue. Which are reminiscence of when he was younger. So I'm just going to go in and Paint them in with my finer brush, just a round brush, whichever one is most comfortable to use. That's the four that I'm using there. And I did put in some of the, um, it's not really black, so I used like a Payne's Gray and then I put some blue in there. 
So around his mask for his face and around the belly of the fish. Um, just like I did the yellow. Just put the, the blue in there and made it blotchy. I didn't want it to be too solid, so put the water down first. Put your paint on top of it and just kind of drop it in. And it'll do that effect. And then around his eye, where his eye would be, you almost can't see his eye. It's really... Um, almost just as dark as the whole mask on his face there. So I just, you know, blotted out with my paintbrush, a clean brush. I just kind of blotted out some lighter area just to kind of have uh, maybe where there's a little bit of a reflection in his eye. So I'm going to come back in with the darker um, Payne's Gray again and define his eye and then probably put it's kind of more of a brown eye, so I'm going to put a little bit of the um, a brown in there also. So I'm going to use red brown. So here I'm still going in and putting all those blue stripes that he has. That's what makes him so beautiful. I used to have a 55 gallon reef tank. I think I talked about that before. We had one of these in our reef tank for a short time. We had a crab hiding in the live rock and he ate them. Expensive little fish. <laughs> but he was he was pretty. Just finish up this blue line here. And there's some in those fins, they're like stripe, stripes of the blue in there. So I kind of exaggerated that bottom fin and made them fan out just to bring a little movement into the painting. And we'll be bringing a lot of movement in with the Zentangle. So the Zentangle, if you didn't watch my videos before and this one's new to you, Zentangle is merely drawing either with ink or what I'm going to use is a paint pen. And it's a repeated pattern. So you're going to do a little pattern and then keep repeating it, repeating it throughout a section of the painting. And you can change the pattern up quite a bit. There's lots of examples and books on it and examples on the internet for Zentangle. But it's called Z-E-N-T-A-N-G-L-E. -E. So basically doodling. <laughs> Doodle on top of your paintings. It's a lot of fun to do. It's very relaxing. I think that's why they call it Zen. <laughs> Zen Tangle. So this is behind his little side fin. But you can still see those stripes because his fin is transparent. And it has a little bit of definition with the blue on the top of the fin. And, but these stripes that I'm painting are actually his body that's behind the fin. So I'm using that same blue. And there's a couple black lines in the fin that go with the angle of the fin. So I'm going to come back after this is dry and put the black in. Now I'm going to go onto his body and paint all of the blue stripes in. So I'm using a little bit more intense of a color with it. I mean, it's the same cerulean blue, but a little thicker in some areas, just so it's not exactly the same as the fin that crosses over it. I'm just going to put a little yellow highlight there. I see that marking on some of the fish when I looked them up on um, Pixabay. And also I look them up on uh, Pinterest or uh, just on the internet in general. So this isn't actually a photo that I have or anything. I'm just having them kind of drop into my painting here. Just Coming in to say hi. 
So those are the fins. So I'm just going to draw the ribs in the fin with my tip of my brush, just very light pressure so you don't make too thick of a line. There, that should do it. He's shaping up pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit deeper yellow. It dried very light. So I'm going to deepen up that yellow in the bottom fin. And then making it kind of stripes because he's a little stripey fish. I love to paint fish. I love to paint things that are in the ocean. It's, it's just amazing what's under there. The, the little bit that we know about it, really. I'm going to come around and define his mouth now. So I am just using a rose color. I was looking on the, my phone there to see what his mouth looks like. And just kind of a permanent rose, just very watered down, just in the inside of his mouth and then he's got these nice big old lips on him so I'm going to come back with the cerulean blue and I'm just going to outline them and then come back with just clean water and blend it into his mouth because really his lips are the same color as his body but there's you know, they stick out a little bit, so I'm trying to figure out how to portray that. So I'm just going to blend them in there like that. And then I think he's also going to need a little bit of sh more shading around his head there, so on his muzzle. There I put in a little bit of that brown on top of the eye and left a few little highlights peeking out and then just kind of did the outline. And I'm thinking that that rose wasn't dark enough so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the paints gray. And you can still see the rose peeking out so it kind of makes like a purple. And kind of mopping up some of that in the front part so that it's more of a shadow on the upper part of the mouth there right in there kind of soften that out there and I'm going to put a little bit of blue right in front of his mouth so it looks like his face kind of has a little dimension curves a bit and I'm gonna do that on the top too So you can see how light that blue dried. It's almost looking white, but there it is blue. There. And that just gives his face a little bit of roundedness. And a few little squiggly lines that are still left over from his youth on the top. Okay, so now you can leave the fish just the way it is, or you can add a little bit more to it with these Posca paint pens. They're acrylic paint. They have a nylon nib on the top, very firm, and you have to kind of pump the pen. So you push that little nib in and out, and eventually the paint will start flowing. So I want to go the opposite direction of my bloom there. So I'm going to go all the way across. And I'm thinking of that other fin that would be somewhere. So I'm going to do, you know, the stripes just like the other side where the fin is yellow and blue. So I'm just going to kind of draw it in with my paint pen here. So I am going to do all of the water part with white. So I'm just trying to define where that fin might go and give it a little movement, a little flare. So 
just a little information that there is the fin is somewhere back there. And now I'm going to just start drawing waves in the water or just movement in the water. So nothing straight, everything curved. And I'm going to continue on with repeating that stripe, curvy stripe throughout the water. And I'm thinking right about here where his mouth is, I could put some bubbles where he's blowing up some bubbles. So I'm going to make a little section to put my Zentangle bubbles in there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw multiple lines. And thinking about how I want those to be. So I'm going to connect that right to the same width of the opening of his mouth there. And I'm going to draw some swirls in the water. Keep repeating that, you know, stacked lines. I'm kind of making them a little bit bolder that way. And I don't want everything to be right alongside the fish, so I'm going to, you know, try to break that up a little bit and put a couple different shapes in there. But I'm thinking of that flow of the water, where the water would be going up. A little swirl in here. There we go, that kind of breaks it up. And I'm repeating that, you know, lines stacked next to each other. Kind of went around the swirl. And I'm thinking about areas where I can fill in with a pattern. And a couple more swirls. It's really a lot of fun to use these paint markers, and everything's paint, so you, it's a acrylic and watercolor paint, those acrylic and those um, markers. I want to break that up there a little bit more so it's not just following his body exactly. So put a little curvy line in there. I'm going to bring it out at the top because then I can add a little Zentangle pattern in there. There, and I have it coming from behind the fish. A little, some, little bit somewhere there. And I got my wave, so I'll put another line around my little swirly wave. So now that's kind of like the background and I can start to um, fill it in with a little bit of the Zentangle technique after I finish this one little swirly wave here. So I'm kind of creating almost like a grid where I can put the Zentangle in between all of these places. And you don't have to put it everywhere. You can put it here and there or just a little bit or a lot if you want to. You know, this is going to be pretty subtle unless you really, you know, are a little bit closer to the painting and then you're going to see all of this. But if you're looking from across the room, you might just see white and color, not really the pattern. Okay, so I think I pretty much got my grid going there. And I'm going to start drawing my bubbles. So these are just uneven shape wise I'm not making totally round they can be any shape that fits in but what I do is I make a bigger bubble and go all the way around don't want to stop it halfway I want to be able to draw all the way around in a circle there's a little bit closer up and then I draw smaller circles around it until I make a smooth enough shape where I can draw a bigger circle in there. So see, I can draw a big one there and then fill that in with some small ones. And I'm going to go all the way in this one section. So it almost looks like bubbles coming out of his mouth, but it's not really. It's, it's just a suggestion or illusion. I'm going to 
put a little bit of these little seaweed balls so they're just on the lines that I drew and I'm not doing them evenly spaced apart I'm doing three then one then five or two and just randomly spacing them I'm going to do them on this next line that's right next to it but I'm going to do them in between where I did the other ones And these little shapes are like the little sea polyps. Um, there's little corals, but they're actually polyps. They're living organisms, just like the coral is. But they're all different animals in themselves, clustered together. And they're open. And then when they get a little um, food that flies by them, they close up, kind of like a Venus flytrap. And so they all are stacked all right next to each other. It makes like a bouquet of them. They're really pretty. They're the flowers of the sea. The ones I had in my tank were purple and green on the edges. They were gorgeous. And then when you turn your lights off, they close up and go right back into like a tube. Interesting, very interesting. And they call them polyps. And I got some string of some kind of organism here these things don't have to be real things they can be anything that you can make up a design for so like now here in my waves I'm drawing a, a little um, lines that kind of makes it look like a shell but the shell shape wouldn't be in my wave but it's all ocean themed things. And I'm going to draw in some little vegetation here. So little branches. I'm coming off of my branches in a V shape. So everything is a V. So if you think of it that way, everything's in a V. So nothing's coming out on right angles. Just make it very natural flow. And I'm putting little circles little dots filled in at the tops of all of my branches and that kind of shows me where there's some empty spaces where I might want to add in another branch like right there or right over here and then I'm just making teardrops so I'm going from the top of that circle and blending it into the branch itself And I want to put some more little veggie shapes in here. So these are little leaves that just kind of tuck in right next to each other just to make a pattern. So remember pattern. So I'm not really drawing leaves. I'm drawing pattern that resembles leaves. Now I'm a doodler from way back. So I'm always the one on the phone drawing little pictures on the pad or... You know, sitting in class, drawing pictures all on the edges of my folders, and I've always done that. So another little chain. And it's getting pretty filled up there now. <laughs> so now I'm going to go with my blue Posca pen. So this blue is just a tad bit brighter than the blue that I painted in those stripes. So I'm just going to border all of those stripes with this blue pen. Add just a little bit more detail to my fish. I'm not going to do too much to the fish. I kind of like him the way he is. I'm just going to add a few little pops. And that'll really make that blue stand out. Sometimes you might get a little wavy on your lines, but that's okay. Just go back and fill it in and blend it in so it all looks the same. I define his face just a little bit right there. See how light that blue dries? So even though there's color on there, he still looks like he has a white face with just some shadow. And I want to put just a few little scales in, and that'll be it.
So thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember to be creative, be you. Peace and love be with you till we see you again. Bye-bye.